All right, it's been a little while since I did a video. Uh, things have been busy with the family and with holidays and work and so on. So I'm definitely not done making videos. I need to get to some tuning and things like that. I've also had some other problems with the car that are completely unrelated to Mega Squirt. Basically, my cabling going to my starter and my alternator is pretty badly corroded, and I've known it from the beginning. It just had always worked before. So now the car doesn't want to crank over every now and then, and it just I got to get those things fixed. So I've got all new cable. I just got to get it run. Um, but I wanted to do a quick video and talk about this new. Uh, Android connectivity that's been coming out for these for a little while so uh, I kind of looked into this tablet it's a, a pretty poor Chinese knockoff tablet that just uh, they're coming out a lot recently they're about uh, somewhere around a little bit over a hundred bucks I want to say uh, actually I got this one free from a Black Friday sale that it came free with some furniture that I was going to buy anyway for the kids' room, so it kind of lucked out because the kid ended up with my Kindle Fire that I was going to use, uh, and this actually is probably going to work a lot better than the Kindle Fire for a few reasons. Uh, first reason is the display resolution on it's actually pretty poor. It's a lot worse than the Kindle Fire. Uh, this is actually an 800 by 480 screen, which is pretty pathetic for tablets these days. Um, just going to the websites and uh, you know, you've got to almost zoom in just to, to read the text on every website. So usability is not very good. I don't really want it as a tablet. I've got other stuff like that, so no big deal. Uh, but one of the big things is this does actually come with Android Jelly Bean. Um, before I forget, this is a uh, Flare 2 from Hip Street, made in China. Um, but essentially... It's got everything I need. One of the cool things it came with was this USB, I think they might call them OTG on the go connectors, but it's basically just a, a female USB to a USB micro. It's something I thought I was just going to have to make, and a lot of people have made them for uh, the Galaxy tablets and things like that that don't come with them. But I opened the box and it was in there, and I was actually kind of surprised. So, um, another thing to look for if you're looking for a tablet to do this is this actually has an additional charging port. Um, if I just hook this this USB right to my USB serial adapter here, if I hooked it just directly through, uh, I would have to inject power into this connector. So I would have to almost definitely make my own cable or find one that has a little power input. So this guy actually came with another one. I will have to build this because this is just a, a 110 volt on the other end. Um, but it plugs right in and that lets me charge while I'm using a USB. I think I've read on the Android forums that you actually, some of the tablets will not support charging while USB OTG is connected. So if you want to hook a flash drive up or something, you can't charge the tablet at the same time. If I remember right, it's a software feature that they have to enable or disable. So um, I think you can root your, your uh, Nexus 7 or whatever version of tablets are like that. I think if you root them you can software fix that limitation but it seemed kind of strange to me but this one actually I've tested it now it's charging right now uh, plugged into my work light over here um, and I'm actually connected so the other connector here if you can see that is um, is just 8th inch stereo that I've got hooked to my, to my radio right now so um, this is not mounted yet I'll figure something out you can go either direction but I'm actually leaning towards the vertical mount for a few reasons but uh, mostly just so I can still reach around and get to my controls and stuff like that so um, I wanted the, the main program I wanted to show here was um, uh, Shadow Dash made by the, the guy who makes Tuner Studio because I, I figured it would be good uh, Tuner Studio is awesome this will grab your Tuner Studio gauges um, is actually getting accelerometer data right now so it can do all sorts of cool stuff logging um, of GPS and accelerometer data right into your logs and things like that so it's pretty cool I was a little disappointed though because I actually bought it before even using it because I just assumed it would be great and it, and it really I'm sure it is but uh, I did read that the USB to FTDI serial was going to be an option that was supported and as of version one point something, 
uh, 1.02, which is the official version or so somewhere around there. Uh, it's not supported, but it is supported in this beta. So uh, I'm on version 1.2, which supposedly has a support, but I'm unable to find it. So uh, I've looked through the settings. I can't get it to connect. If I go to Bluetooth, it crashes out because I don't have a Bluetooth chip uh, in this particular tablet. But either way, I wanted to show that, but it didn't work. And I was actually going to just mention this MS Droid, which is a free app that's on uh, Google Play. And I'm actually pretty impressed with it. I plugged in the USB uh, to the bottom here. It came right up, grabbed all my settings off of uh, the Mega Squirt. Uh, and it just started working so I can I can move the gas pedal and you hopefully can see this gauge uh, Moving up at the top right corner uh, It's throttle position. I can't really run the car right now the battery's all my cabling's all kind of loose and and poorly attached right now, but um, You know, it's got some some additional gauges and things like that. I probably will end up with um, using shadow dash because it supports all your tuner studio graphs and things like um, actual, or I'm sorry, gauges, but things like actual graphs, which is something I really, I, I've got all these gauges here that, that, you know, up on the dash and in this A pillar that do all the instantaneous readouts, but that's not as important to me as a graph of what just happened on a, you know, if I do a pull, I can't look at every single gauge at once and drive the car and look at, um, you know, everything I need to look at so that's why I think some some short-term graphs maybe you know from across the screen here have AFR RPM and some other things and just basically be able to go in and say okay was my AFR you know under 10 while I was in boost that whole or sorry under 12 the whole time I was in boost and and things like that so that's what I'm really looking to get out of this particular display most of my other gauges work fine although I could possibly replace the uh the normal gauges in here but then if the thing gets stolen or something then i gotta drive home with no gauges and whatnot so anyway that's pretty cool um actually i wanted to show a few other things on this the what's different about ms droid that's really nice is that it'll actually let you do some tuning uh it'll do the logging and everything else um but you can go through and and do your normal tuning this is you know idle control idle cranking steps um Here's the actual fuel table. Wow, 3D and everything fuel table. So I'm not sure if I can make changes here, but I was looking at it in 2D earlier uh, somehow. And basically it lets you change the tables on the fly. It'll let you burn, undo changes. So pretty nice. I wouldn't use this as a primary tuning tool. I'd rather have a laptop. But in a pinch it definitely works. If it gets cold out and you don't have your idle settings right or your cranking you know cold cranking stuff just right and you need to make a little change just to get you going or get you down the road it seems like it should be pretty great for that so i would definitely have this on your device even if you're not going to go uh, with this on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, you know choose a shadow dash route like i think i'm going to now if this got some some graphs in it and and things like that then maybe i would use this i'm not really sure actually but um, anyway, that's that's about it. That's about what I wanted to show uh, in this video. I'm gonna. I haven't really worked out how this is gonna all work out. Uh, I know that there's some some software out there that will handle automating things like when the tablet gets power, it, it turns on and launches an app, and when it loses power, it puts it into sleep mode and things like that. So I think boot up time should be pretty instantaneous. Um, I know actually. MS Droid supports uh, when you plug in the USB, it'll launch it right up. So uh, hopefully Shadow Dash will get something like that soon if it doesn't uh, work already somehow that I haven't found yet. Um, otherwise, that's about it. I've got you know Xbox Media Center on here, which kind of I've got to find a different player that'll work a little bit better. But uh, I'll put you know Winamp on there or something that that lets me. Uh, play music on this as well and put my stereo in auxiliary mode and um, just cruise on down the road basically listen to music and having my gauge up hopefully I'll get all that worked out so uh, seems like a pretty cool thing for you know 120 bucks or something like that uh, so that's about it uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more videos soon I gotta get the rest of this car wired up and uh, with Christmas coming up I hope it's this year but um, I've only got a few more weeks before I head out of town again, so 
Um, anyway, that's about it. So one other feature that I forgot to mention is that when you're using MS Droid or Shadow Dash, you can create logs of all your data, uh, which includes GPS and everything else. So uh, when you stop logging, if you've configured it to do so, you can set up MS Droid with your Dropbox account if you have one, so it'll automatically update your logs to Dropbox, so you can analyze them when you get home later or whatever you want to do with them, just store them. Um, the Shadow Dash also will store them, but it goes to Tuner Studio's servers. So I'm not sure exactly how integrated they are, but I know you can go and get them off of Tuner Studio's site, and hopefully they'll support a Dropbox option at some point as well, because I think that sounds like a good idea. Uh, maybe some other services as well. But either way, they both uh, will allow you to log, and, and sometimes even I think both of them will allow you to log uh, based on certain events like throttle position is greater than this or you know things like you don't necessarily want to log a whole bunch when your engine's just heating up all the time because that's not real great data necessarily to to analyze later so uh, you can say when coolant temperatures over this and you can use a switch to turn on logging and things like that so there's a lot of options that you have there and uh, it's, it's pretty neat to not have to necessarily have a laptop or even to have a uh, it pretty much makes the SD card slot on the uh, Megasquirt 3X. Uh, it might be one on Megasquirt 3 as well. I can't remember, but pretty much makes that useless in my opinion, uh, unless you get a lot better speed. Um, I know that there's also a turbo mode that's coming out or something that MS3 supports. If you need higher speed data, you can get up to like 100 writes a second, which is pretty, pretty darn fast, actually. I think I was getting... Uh, on MS Droid over USB serial. Uh, I think I'm on 19.2 baud, which I believe is the fastest that the MS2 is going to do. Uh, might be 38.4, I don't recall. But either way, I was getting 30 records a second, which is still, I think, pretty good uh, for what I need. So, seems like pretty cool stuff. Uh, looking forward to getting it mounted and working, and hopefully, I'll have some more videos coming out soon.